Hi everyone! Today we're gonna cook something world famous from a Turkish guy. It's gonna be a meat sushi by Nusret, aka salt beef. And the masters of the universe! And it's sushi rice on top. There's meat and there's some great sauce and some cheese if you like and a bit of chips. And I wanna show you how to make this great recipe at home. First off, because we're gonna make a sushi, we're gonna have to do the sushi rice. And I have here half a cup of rice, which is 30. 130 grams, as Burak says. And what is sushi rice? It's just this like thick bellied rice and short. When the belly of the rice is thicker, the starch content is always more. So the starch helps it to be sticky and comes to your tooth at the same time. So 130 grams of rice. And I'm going to first wash it. When you cook it, you have to wash it for several times and then put it in water and let it sit for about 20 minutes so that the extra starch is gone, so that it's not very, very sticky. And then it's gonna be ready to cook. Now, here I have filet steak. I'm gonna use for the sushi half of this perfect, nice filet steak, which is this part of the wheel, which doesn't move. So it's the most softest meat and it's great because I want to cut it easily. I'm gonna put this into the freezer for 10, 15 minutes when I'm preparing the other stuff. Ripsha, your necklace is talking. Is it? What does it say? This is a gift from a friend. It says Refika. It has all the letters here. It's not like a letter necklace. You know, there are famous letter necklaces. This is a name logo necklace. You can actually buy it from Etsy. I used to call it Etsy and he says, no, it's Etsy. You write your name, let's say Bahar, and then they prepare a logo and send it to you. And if you say, okay, they turn it into this kind of a necklace and they send it in two days. They what? ship it in two days and it's amazing. I want one too. You want one too? Okay, I'll get you one. And if anyone wants it, he's this great guy. He's also Turkish. I'm gonna put a link somewhere here okay. or here. You can buy it, guys. It's a great Christmas present. It's a great birthday present. All good. Is it gold? Yes, this one is gold, but it's very affordable, interestingly. If you don't want a gold, if your budget is not enough, you can buy a silver one, which is in gold color as well. I have a potato, which will be enough for six pieces. And we have this scrub. It's an old... Lofa cabbage, they call it. Huh. Wow. Brax's English is greatly improving, by the way. <laughs> Bravo. We use this while washing the potatoes so that all the dust and the soil is gone but we don't lose any potatoes and any taste. Here I have this kind of peeler, which has lines. So what I'm gonna do is when I cut it like this, I have stripes. If you don't have such a thing, you can like thinly stripe from a mandolin or a side of the grater and then cut it with a knife. I don't want the potatoes to turn dark, so I'm just gonna drop them in water like this. As it gets smaller, it becomes harder. So what I do, I do not do it all the way. I use like this half, leave as little as possible. Then I turn it and hold it with my hand and then use it to hold the potato and do the rest. Suddenly we have quite a lot of potatoes. I'm also gonna fry this one, so I throw it in. I'm gonna leave it in water so that the starch goes away for a while. And meanwhile, that's waiting. I'm gonna start cooking my rice. So. I turn on the heat. I'm gonna cook the rice in a cast iron pot like this, but you can always make it in a stainless steel while it's cast iron. It's gonna sit for a while and it's better because the lid is heavy, no moist gets out. Now, I'm gonna drain my rice, put it in. It was 130 grams and I'm gonna put 20% more water, which is, um, uh, the ratio is one to one, no, 1.2. It is uh, 156, 160 milliliters of water, I, we can say easily. I put it into this cup so that the leftover rice is, can be easily dropped like this. And it's room temperature water. The rice is gonna boil in high heat for like two to three minutes. And after it boils, I'm gonna take it from the biggest heat to the lowest as the stove gives you the chance to. 
and it's gonna simmer for 10 minutes. And after it simmers for 10 minutes, we turn off the heat totally without opening the lid. We're gonna let the rice soak on the moist inside for another 10 minutes. And then it's gonna be ready as the sushi rice. But I'm gonna also add some sweetness, sourness and saltiness to it when the time comes. Now, I'm gonna prepare the sauce, but before that, also turn on the heat for the oil. Nusret makes an avocado sauce for his sushi, and I'm gonna make an avocado sauce and also have a different one. For that, oof, this is one of the most beautiful avocados I've ever cut in my life. Almost a heap teaspoon of avocado. Let's make it a tablespoon. Beat it, and a bit of... <laughs> didn't work. I don't have that kind of muscle. So we mash the avocado at a tablespoon of mayonnaise. This is a store-bought one. Sorry guys, I haven't been able to make it. And a bit of salt. And I put a bit of wasabi sauce in it. This gives an edge to the taste and helps to combine the sushi flavors in your mouth much more than anything. So... Hmm. I like how the wasabi bites. But if you say, Rifika, where the hell am I gonna find wasabi? And avocado is always not so easy to find. I have a different simple version of it. Tablespoon of mayo, teaspoon of barbecue sauce. Mm. Yes. So this is a Rifika version. It really is well with the meat and mayo gives a really that sushi thing quite a lot. So my sauces are ready. My rice is cooking. Now I'm gonna check whether my oil is done and I put a wooden spoon and there are almost no bubbles around it. So it's not ready yet. Meanwhile, what I'm gonna do until it heats up is I put my, I love these, kitchen towels. They're out of muslin. I take one third of the potato here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rub it. What does this do? It takes the extra water, the starchiness out so that our potatoes can be crunchy. It also helps separate each of the potatoes. Hold on. Recheck. It has to start to bubble immediately. Yes. Sometimes that happens. It depends on the oil. What you should do is immediately turn off the heat, but almost no oil dripped, so no problem. The fries are gonna cook in three batches. I don't want to crowd them so that this is gonna cook in three times. By the way, you can use the oil at least six times. Don't throw your oil away. Any kind of oil is very precious. When they are finished, I think 10 minutes is done with my rice. So I turn the heat off. It's gonna sit for 10 more minutes. After the fries are done, we can move on to cooking our sushi. Yes, while frying my potatoes and anything, I used to use paper towel, but now I use a sieve and it drips all the extra oil. And plus, because it, there's also air from the bottom, the crunchiness doesn't go away. It's very nice. Now, the sushi rice is great on its own, but if there's like sourness, saltiness and sweetness together, it becomes something else and it has this like power to all the meats, the fish, etc. I have here rice vinegar, but if you don't have rice vinegar, you can use plain vinegar. If you just use plain vinegar, use white wine vinegar if possible, and one and a half tablespoon kind of thing. Quite a lot. <laughs> Five pinches of salt. Anyways, everyone should stick to their own style. Two pinches of sugar for the sweetness. You can use honey for this as well. I'm gonna mix this well. There are a lot of salt around. The salt is okay because I'm going to put meat on it a little later. It's not going to be wasted. And now my rice is ready. As you have realized, I never opened the rice. Also going to add a drop of oil as well. You add a little less. Okay. And now I'm going to mix it. As you can see, it's sticky but fluffy at the same time because it's still hot. Some of the vinegar already evaporates. I take a tray, cause if it's this hot, it's not so great. It has to get cool. And I'm gonna use a tray to increase the surface area to cool down. If you say, Rifika, I don't have sushi rice and I want to use whatever the rice I have at home, you can do it. But the water ratio might differ a bit 
For example, in Turkish rice, it's one to one and a half. In jasmine basmati, again, one to one and a half. So this will cool down. And now I'm ready to get the meat. I have this meat. This is almost 750 grams of meat. This part is gonna be for the sushi. What I'm gonna do is thinly slice the meat. His show would be like this now. I got this knife because it looks more like Nusret's, but I'm much confident with my loved one. Why? I'm gonna dip my meat. Sorry, sorry. But before, what I'm gonna do is have the rice in a spoon like that. Then I'm gonna press the spoon like this from the edge and I'm gonna put it. This is lid of a clay casserole, but you can use a cast iron, you can use wood, whatever you like. To do my show, I can only fit seven, but hand 11 would do. If, for example, it doesn't look good, what you can do is put a bit of oil in your hand like this and push it with your fingers. It's done. Now, the meat. Take the piece. It's not very thin, it's not very thick. Put it in soy sauce and cover the rice with the meat and tuck with your edges of your fingers the meat under. This is ready. And for example, in some parts, there are some rice sticking out. It's not important at all. Sometimes it might burn, but it's okay. But if you can like tuck them in, it's better. For example, if you're gonna have a guest, you can do the preparation until now and put this into the refrigerator. And when they come, you set the table, you can take it out and have your show. Now, if you're gonna do this at home, please put the plate on the somewhere fire safe. Now, we have here blowtorch. I turn it on. What we do is this. We want the Millard reaction, so we want it to brown. There are a lot of flames when they do it. Probably the wood is oily and that's for the show. And when you are doing it, put it on a place and just burn it like this. Don't like come very close, then it will have a taste of the gas. But if you do it from a little far away, it's much better like this. You think that the meat is not cooked, it's cooked, it's beautiful and it's ready. I'm gonna put for two of them cheese, if you want to make it cheesy. You can melt the cheese as well, like this. And on top, I'm gonna put from the avocado sauce. Three with avocado, four with the barbecue. And my potato. <laughs> and it's not finished. Da -da -da -da. This is not ordinary salt, this is flake salt. Any kind of flake salt would change the taste incredibly. So we are ready. If you want it a bit hot, I can also put some red pepper. Might not need it, but I just wanted the color. Can we eat it now? Please do. Burak, in Turkey, three pieces is 130 liras. And in, I think, US, $30 a piece. So $30 for you, man. <laughs> Mm. 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 As you can see, the meat is medium and it's so nice, but I cannot give this to you. It's $30, Meze. It's really good. Like it's smoke, soy sauce, the mayo. <laughs> wow. Wow. Guys, please, please try this. You'll fall in love with it. This is one recipe. With the rest, 
I'm gonna do the Turkish delight, but I want to do it in a different video. Can I do it in a different of video? Of course. Okay, so if you want to continue Nusret recipes, please write it down. And I'm gonna make it for you guys, maybe with the onion as well. Oh, I love the onion. Okay, we're in love with you guys. And if you love us too, please subscribe and like the video. That changes a lot. And uh, hope to see you next week.